Guys, welcome back to Airbros Review SA. Today we're going to do a retake on the JTS.22 Air Cuda. Air Cuda, guys. So, yeah, stick around and uh, we'll chat again. Alright, so yeah, with me today, I thought let me just, um, after all the lovely rains we had today, as you can see, everything is super wet and soggy and full of mud, but we are out here and we're going to do a little bit of a retake, like I was saying, on the JTS Air Cuda M.22. So if you would wish to see the first unboxing video and so forth, I'll put it on the link on the top, whichever side. I'll put it on the top there, you guys can follow it up. So this is just a follow up um, on these air guns. This is a really, 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 really well built air gun. Okay, I don't know if you guys have seen on the forums and so forth, a lot of guys here in South Africa, there's two main people that um, had problems with accuracy issues. All right, yes, we hear you. You guys did have accuracy issues. No problem about that. The factory worked on all those things to sort the guys out. So basically they first had an adapter plate, um, putting it in, in. Okay, so let me tell you what the actual problem was. People with silencers, if they would add any silencer on, it would give them inconsistency. It would not be on par. But later on the video, I'm going to explain why. So just hear me out. So, step one, they started with a little plate that you could put in here. They thought it was not lining up and so forth. Um, sent that to us. We can give that to the clients. And the second thing that they gave to us really, really works. If you want to shoot with a silencer, look, without a silencer, it works perfectly. There's no problems whatsoever. If you want a silencer, they've got their own little air gun silencer, right? Look at the size, guys. It's very small. Still yet to this day, I've found that when I use a longer silence and so forth, you will get the clipping issues. I'm going to display on the, the screen right now why I say so. If you have a look, this is the shrouded part that's on the air gun now at the moment. All right, The barrel actually ends round about here, roughly round about there. Then in between that the standard fittings and so on and all the other jazz that's inside here it's going to be um parts let me show you <clears throat> so in this little bag i took them out because we even got the donny fl adapter that it screws in and it replaces all these little goodies so you'll see there these by the way is aluminium silencer modular can you call it inserts so there's about four of them that go in there then that one there would be your muzzle brake and plus it stabilizes the barrel on the inside with the o-ring and so forth so this one turns onto the barrel and then in the front here you'll get the rest of these four little goodies and uh, they act as a silencing um, port inside the shroud if you have a look at that you know pretty nice a lot of people make them out of plastic but these guys have gone and done it out of aluminium which shows me that these people know what they are doing so have a look at this this is the silencer adapter that goes in the front right guys so i'll show you now there is that little spacer plate oh well, i'll put it on there if, as you can see there don't know if the camera's focusing but it's on this little magodi so that didn't work so the second thing that worked if you want to shoot with a silencer is their own silencer so going back to my point here all those silencing adapters and all those things go inside right here so have a look at it. It's got a free area where the pellet comes through. All right. So basically without the silencer, let's say without the silencer right here, because the barrel ends there, it's got that amount of distance to travel in a no man's land, they would call it. As soon as it exits the barrel, then it gets into atmospheric pressure. All right. So hear me out now. So once you st uh, start installing on a silencer and so forth, even a longer one, because this is a fat boy, it's very short. I've just put on a muzzle brake there in the front. We've still got them in stock now, guys. These are pretty cool. They look legit, so it looks flipping like a bazooka. But anyway, enough about the silencer here. 
What happens then, guys? Look at this. Right over here is where the barrel ends. Look at how far the no man's land becomes. It becomes way more. So, listen, this is where the theory comes in. Hear me out. Now that low, no man's land that it has to travel. So, how a pellet works in a barrel. Don't quote me if I'm wrong, but this is what I'm saying. It is, it's got a spin to it, so it depends on the twist rate that you're shooting out. But generally, pellets don't need spin. It is the shape of a badminton cock, if you would call it. That's how they balance themselves and sort themselves through the air. So when once it leaves the barrel, it needs that positive atmospheric pressure when it releases out in the open to get it to start stabilizing. Because once you check the pellet in very slow-mo, like those slow-mo guys and so forth, with a pellet, if you can see it from behind, how it actually, it does like wobble as soon as it gets out of that no man's land. You know, it starts inside there, it starts wobbling. When it hits the atmospheric pressure, it starts to write itself out and then it flows smooth. And that's where you'll get your accuracy. So now, when you put on a massive silencer on this air gun, and that air, you know, that call it no man's land, it becomes too long. You are going to get in clipping issues. Now people say, oh, it's not lined up and so forth and all that. Listen, we've, ta we've, we've actually looked, you know, with the barrel correlations, with the lining up and so forth, and line boring it on the inside to see it is perfectly in line. So it is not because it's skew. It's because of that pellet that just exits the barrel, it's in the no man's land. I think it's got a, a reason to have a smaller gap in between, all right, to get that, you know, a little bit to go through and then it won't clip or anything whatsoever. Once you start extending that distance in between the no man's land area to your silencer on top of it as well, it becomes too much and that's where you'll get the clipping and then you're going to say this gun is a tweet tweet and um, I don't want to swear on the YouTube channel, but anyway, it will look horrible so i hope you guys understand that so i would suggest if you buy this flipping fantastic air gun really it is guys the cocking lever is super butter smooth i haven't felt a smooth cocking lever like this in a very very long time for especially for the price that you're paying for this air gun so once you Check about all these things with the silences and things like that. You can shoot it without a silencer. It is damn accurate. It's a little bit loud. But now, put on the shorter silences. It works just as great. I mean, even with this one. Uh, what I'll do is on the, on the screen, yeah. Between the fat boy with a muzzle brake, I'll play um, the decibel meter. All right. And then, if you can check uh, what readings it is. And then you'll have a look at the... Donny, not the Donny, it's going to be the JTS own one silencer. I'll put it on the screen so you can check that out. Versus no silencer. So with that out of the way, now guys, all I can say is also to the manufacturer from JTS, to eliminate all this, if people want to put on longer silences making their gun look like a swimming pool pole i would suggest to jts maybe why don't you guys look at a replacement or upgraded barrel that is the same length i mean that's almost going to be quite long i mean that's going to be awesome you're going to even get more speed out of it standard speed people say oh but that barrel is going to be too short um, and i'm not going to get speeds let me tell you one thing with the 18 grain um, JTS pellets, I'm getting about 930, 40 feet per second out of that short barrel. That is fantastic. This gun is regulated as well. It is awesome. So now, think to yourself. Now you're going to put on a longer barrel, you're even going to get more speed. So you're going to actually can shoot slugs out of this thing and so forth. And then, you know, you can go heavier with the pellets and, and, and. I think that's going to eliminate all the clipping issues for the other guys that tend to want to have a longer silencer. But if you don't, this is the option or the JTS silencer. Then you'll be sorted for life, my guys. I'm telling you now, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to do a 50 meter grouping with a silencer. Hello. 
and I'll put this one on so you guys can see the two different groupings. Okay guys, see you now. Okay, righty guys, we're here at the 50 meters, 54 yards. The pellets I'm shooting today is the 18.13 dense centers. That's my preferred one. I have adjusted the hammer spring on this bad boy, on this air gun, on the JTS. So I've got the Donnie FL Sumo 2.0. I'm going to shoot it on the left hand side, all right. Five shot grouping and then on the right I've got a dot there where I'll put the JTS silencer to show you guys that they work with both. So as you can see the wind is blowing, that's no problem, let's wing it. So I'm just going to hold dead center. Excuse the pun. Look at that guys, 943. Round about on this setting, I get about 30 shots per full. And uh, as you can see, I am curving those bullets in here with uh, those <laughs> JTS pellets. In this wind, guys, it is fantastic. Look at that. Okay, it's not loaded. I can make sure I can install. The JTS silencer, let's check what it can do. Let us see. Let's see if that one is even running. Yeah, boy. Okay, now, makes it look a little bit sleeker. And it's a bit shorter. But let's see what I can get out of it. I'm going to hold dead center, like I said, and just see where it lands. And let's see the grouping. So it's a little bit right. Still 942. Okay. Guys, for 50 meters, that's not bad, eh? With the two silencers on and so forth, and it works like a bomb, man. But I like the Donnie FL. Silencer, it looks pretty cool. I go for the looks, and uh, obviously, have a look at this wonderful shirt. We've got the hoodies also available. Go look on our website. Um, thanks, Mr. Donnie FL, they are flipping fantastic. It's pretty cool um, merchandise from them, and so forth. So, we also sell them. Unfortunately, shirts are sold out, we'll get new ones in the future. And then, yeah, go have a look at the hoodies. Um, they're basically nice and warm and good colors. And they're awesome. They're just awesome. Also want to give a shout out to Mr. Patchman, a patch worm, if you would call it like that. Um, all I've done is with one of my um, Eagle Vision scope mount, you know, they come in these nice hard carry cases. So I've just made a little um, cleaning kit there for me with ballistol and so forth. But uh, patch worm is the way to go, guys, to clean your air gun barrels. No copper brushes. Ready, please. Let's go check the grouping down there. Oh, and my FX trusty chronograph, the ballistics one. Guys, if you want something like this, this thing is pretty awesome to use. As you can have a look at that, what they will give you, your, your 50 yards and all those nice kind of little settings. Um, they will give you a basic a ballistic and your speed, what it will be for those different distances. Um, let's go to next. Uh, let's see how much deviation 11.8 um, spread your standard deviation is 3.55 pretty good I love this thing it works well so yeah if you want to get your BCs and so on for that specific uh, condition of the days remember ballistic coefficiency works with conditions weather barometric altitude and all that other kinds of jazz but anyway we'll see you down range we had 50 meters and if you can have a look at that size grouping for that kind of weather conditions with the JTS Akuda where the people say they're not accurate they are damn accurate for 50 meters I think that is pretty good we just got one that got away there and then all four on the top there so I don't know what that could have been but yeah look at that that's pretty sick for just changing over the silences and look at their point of impact more or less there but it's there so uh, yeah, 
I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this and let's quickly see because of the windy conditions if we can get something out there and uh, see you in a bit. Okay guys, got a rocky sitting on the top there. I'm gonna quickly see. Have a look at that guys, as I stopped here just to collect uh, my gong at 50 meters, I had one of the rockies sit here and um, fired the shot, didn't read the wind as, uh, as I wish I could, but um, yeah, managed to get that guy. There's another one sitting on the roof there, what I'm going to do. I don't know if you guys can see me. Let me just quickly do this. I've got a gong stand here. Okay, he flew away, but there's like a, a dove there. And um, let me quickly see if I can. Okay, they all flew away. It's short, Pope. So they're all sitting underneath the roofs. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Oh, what a beaut shot, guys. What a beaut shot. He was on that fence. And we took him out. So, I'm going to go get my stand. And I'll just wait around here and see what we can get. Got that one. <laughs> but 75 meters, guys, that is pretty far. Have a look at that. That is some distance. Here we go. Down and out. All over here, them pigeons on landing. I'm going to give you my final thoughts if you could uh, please like and share subscribe to this channel and just hit the notification button below uh, before I carry on here and then um, yeah so basically with it shooting out today I really had fun I really like to shoot with this air gun as you can see 
the cocking lever, it is so battery smooth. And it's so awesome. I mean, guys, it's just, wow. It just picks up quite nice. So if you were looking for a traditional air gun, this is the one to go for. It's got an adjustable cheek piece. The ergonomics on it with the cocking lever here on the right hand side, it's not ambidextrous and so forth. Um, you can adjust your hammer spring in and out and uh, adjust your regulator. It's internally adjustable, not externally. So you adjust it where you want and then go for it. So it all depends on how you set your regulator to get your shotgun. I got 30 shots uh, per full today. Pretty happy about that. Um, took out these pigeons. As you could see, the wind was pumping today and uh, I could take the the doves and pigeons around here about 50 to about 70 meters if uh, the videos and so on were crystal clear um, but anyway I really enjoyed it no problems with accuracy issues whatsoever with this current setup the way I did I shot it with this silencer and with a JTS silencer throughout the video um, and uh, really worked well so for the Farm use, I would really not use a silencer if you want to be incognito in the stealth mode. Yeah, use this big bad boy or the smaller one, depending on you. But um, if you're shooting in the back garden, nah, I wouldn't rate. It's quite loud, but not as loud as you would wish it to be. Very quiet, you know. There are other air guns that's very quiet, but you can't compare it to this one's price. I mean, this one is flipping fantastic. The, the build quality on this thing is something next level. And um, yeah, let me just mention quickly about the uh, scope I had on today, guys. Have a look at this. This is called the Crimson Trace. This is a fantastic little scope, guys. The, the, let me just quickly take off my camera equipment so I can quickly show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> 4 to 16 by 50 guys crimson trace look at that it even has little lines here so you can line it up with your scope mounts to get it perfectly flush and that's what I did this morning the listen to the dial <laughs> wow it's so crisp even your left to right your magnification wheel um, here at the back it's very smooth plus your parallax wheel and it's illuminated reticle so guys this is a plus point so first focal plane scope the the further you zoom out the smaller the crosshairs go the more you zoom in the bigger the crosshairs become i would suggest if you are wearing glasses don't look at a first focal plane scope as the reticle can become a little bit quite finish for the eyes so if you do not wear glasses first focal plane should do the job but everybody's eyes are different come pick it up check through it you know through all its magnification ranges to see if it would work for you that's just one tip I would give you and then rather look at a second focal plane if you can't see it at um, for the first focal plane if you can't see it at the minimum um, you know not everybody shoots on minimum but if you're gonna go do hunting and so forth you want to see a bigger field of view that's when you'll use it on minimum so it all depends on your application so ask and check so anyway that is a brilliant scope so it's a 30 mil tube 50 here in the front and it works like a bomb as you could see how crystal clear the glass was but guys i really appreciate everything you guys have been doing for me i haven't gone on pension i'm still making videos i was just busy at the shop look at these shirts we've like i said earlier in the video we've got the hoodies because winter's coming in south africa now and uh, come check on our website for those hoodies for Donny FL. Very, very nice. I even got myself one and the missus, and it really is quite warm. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you on the next one. Love you long time.